Hello, good evening, and welcome to Become a Better Man. My name is Tunde Disu. Apologies that we're starting quite late, later than the usual 8 p.m. On today's program, we are going to be looking at perception. Perception. The ability to see, the ability to hear or become aware of something through the five senses that we have. We perceive by seeing, by hearing, by tasting, by feeling, by smelling. With, our, with the five senses that we have as human beings, it's a way in which something is regarded or something is understood or something is interpreted. Or it's, it's, it's a way that we interact with our environment. We perceive things. We, we, we see them or we hear them in a certain way. And that is why two people will see the same thing and interpret it differently. Two people will hear the same thing and their interpretation and their understanding of it will be completely different. Even though they're looking and seeing and hearing the same thing or, or looking at the same object or the same scenario. It is not because one is wrong or the other one is right. It is because that is the way each of those people relate to the object or relate to what they are seeing, what they are hearing, what they are feeling. And also is a, it's one of the reasons why you say something to somebody and they they, they give you a feedback of what they think you've said or what they've heard you said or how they've understood what you've said and you're thinking no that's not what i'm saying but it's not because you don't think that because you know that's not your intention or that's not the interpretation of what you're saying does not negate the fact that that is the way they have heard it because from their point of view from their perception yes they've heard what you've said yet they've seen what you've done Yes, they, yes, they can, they can, they can relate to the situation, but their understanding of it, their interaction with it, their interpretation of it, could be different. And that is why sometimes, if not most of the time, actually, it is it is erroneous to judge somebody because you don't know the full story. You can even if you know the full story their own emotional investment in that matter, in that situation, you don't have it. Even if they try to explain it to you till they blew in the face, it will still not be the same as they feel it, as they see it, as they experience it, and therefore that will determine the way they inter interpret it. No wonder Bob Marley said those who feel it knows it and there are certain things in life about you and i that with all of the best intentions in the world and with all of the best efforts that you can put into it people just won't get it not because they're bad not because you are bad it comes down to this one thing perception for instance you work in an organization and you've been working side by side with your boss or your manager or your supervisor. Maybe you are into sales or marketing or something like that. And then your manager comes in one day punching the air and, and dancing and just being very happy. And he said, guess what? I've just closed the biggest deal of my career. I mean, the deal is what? 5 million, 10 million, whatever the value is. And yes, you are happy for your manager. Oh yes, you are happy that now you can, the, the, the next stage now is to, is to start servicing that deal, which is great. But some people have the perception of, why couldn't I have closed the deal? Why shouldn't it have been me closing that type of a deal? I should be the one. I have what it takes. I know these people. I've spoken to them. Why should I be the one closing the deal? Which is a good and a legitimate question to ask. 
But you see, there's a gap between, there's a difference between you asking to know compared to asking to blame. Asking to, to talk yourself down, to, 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 to rubbish your own effort. But what you are not taking into consideration, what you have not brought into the, into the equation is the fact that you've been on this job for just eight months. But this manager has been doing this for 15 years. And so the difference in his knowledge, his ability, his connection, his, his, his wherewithal concerning everything is different from yours. So you can't go about knocking yourself because you couldn't close the same deal as your boss or your manager, even though you do the same thing. It is because we compare ourselves with other people. And there's nothing wrong with comparing yourself with other people unless when you do the comparison, you talk yourself down. You see the lack in you. You see the wrong in you. You see the inabilities in you. You see the, the failures in you. Now you are doing a disservice to yourself. Because in actual fact, even though your manager, in for using this example for that we've just been talking about, even though your manager has just closed the deal of five million pounds, which is great, it doesn't make him a better person than you because there are other aspects to life than closing a deal that you need to put into the equation. But if all you see, if all you can relate to, if all you can perceive, if all you can connect with in that situation is just the deal, your perception of your manager will be wrong because you think he's the best thing that's ever happened to the organization. But worse than that is that your perception of yourself will also be wrong because you'll be thinking you are not able. You don't have what it takes. And such downward perception of yourself will rob you of even wanting to try or making an effort or going to see the manager afterwards to learn from him or her. How did you do it? What did you say to them? How did you approach this question that always that will always come up when I'm having this conversation with, with clients? What should I be saying to them? But also, what other aspect of this manager's life do you know? Do you know how he, where he is, for instance, in his interpersonal relationship with other people? Do you know how he relates to his family? Do you know how he handles himself under pressure? Do you know how he re how he will react if you were the one that's closed that day? There are so many other parts of our lives that we don't know, that we don't see, that we don't even have an inclination of what they are. And because of that short-sightedness, if you go about comparing yourself with another, without the f as much of these factors being put in, in, into the equation, you will do yourself a disservice because your perception of yourself will be wrong and your perception of them will also be wrong. But hey, we live in a world of immediacy. Now, instantly, urgently, quickly, do it now. Show me now. Have it now. Give it now. Because we live in that in that bubble of now, it is almost permissible not to not to question why we compare one ourselves with other people. Again, there's nothing wrong with comparing as long as you don't talk yourself down, learn from them, glean from their experience, 
borrow from their methods. See how they can improve you. But whatever you do, have the right perception of yourself. You see, there, there, is, no, there, is, there, there is nothing wrong in thinking about how to improve. What is wrong is rather than using that as a tool to improve, you use it as a tool to beat yourself down. Unfortunately, we also have, generally, I'm talking generally now, we also always think other people are better than us. But you see, the, the, the operative word there is better. What is your qualification? What are the things, what are the parameters, what are the factors that you put into the box to come out with the final product called better? We think most people have what we want, but we don't have them. So we spend most of our time thinking about and hoping that and wishing that we could have what they have. We could become like they are. We could go to where they are. We could live where they live and do this and all of that. But if all of your life and focus is on that, you won't go anywhere. The best thing you can do is to just be yourself. Be yourself. Somebody said, be yourself because everyone else is already taken. Everybody is being who they are. You can never, will never be them. Just learn to be yourself, to appreciate yourself, to improve yourself, to work on yourself rather than to beat yourself down and to rubbish your own effort and to sabotage your own your own ability just because of of a wrong perception everybody lives in the world of if only i if only i have this if only i am that if only i can be that if only i i can but guess what the same way you are hoping and wishing and lamenting and complaining that you want to be. There are others that are also wanting to be just like you are right now. Where you are right now is somebody else's dream. Is somebody else's, like, the, the, the height of everything. But you see, if you have a wrong perception of yourself, if you think wrongly of yourself, if you don't have a balanced perception of yourself, you will think there's nothing good about you. You've heard of stories. We've all read about stories of children, of young adults in school, in colleges, where the teacher came to the conclusion oh you can there's nothing good that can come out of you or even some parents have said that to their own children oh there's nothing you you are just good for nothing some children will use that as a stepping board to to go higher some will live for the rest of their lives under that those words at the end of the day what is your perception? What perception of yourself do you have? We all have gifts. We all have talents. We all have abilities. We all have what is unique about us. There is no one on earth that God created without a specific gift or ability or talent or whatever you want to call it, you have that. The question is, have you found it? Have you discovered it? Have you embraced it? Have you, have you, have you, have you worked on it? Or are you working on it? Because these skills and talents and abilities and whatever you want to call them, it's the key to you fulfilling yourself is the key to you becoming 
all that you are destined to be. And that is why that is why 11 or 22 people will be on the field playing football. They are all footballers, professionals. But there is that one person. There is that one defender, one goalkeeper, one striker, one midfielder that just there's something about that person. And the same skill that the 22 of them have that with which they become professional footballers, that same skill will make that one person famous and become everything. But it does not negate the fact that there were 20, 21 other people with similar abilities, with the same quality, with the same talent. Have you discovered yours? If you spend all of your life and all of your time thinking and hoping and wishing and complaining and condemning yourself because you are not like the other person, because you don't have what they have, because you can't be. Even your gifts, your talent, your abilities, your, your grace, they will, they will just lay dormant. Everything you see, everything you hear or experience in any way at any point in time will affect or affect the perception that you have of yourself, of others, and of the environment. The question is, what do you do with that? You know, we all get up, we all get caught up in our in our own stories. But it, you you might be surprised to, to find out that most of us are not really our own stories. Because when those stories, when they take on a life of themselves, and they start playing out right in front of your eyes. And they don't look like the story that you think is your story. They are not coming out the way you think your, excuse me, your story should come out. Then people get disillusioned. But you see, life evolves at the level of perception. Life evolves at the level of perception. What do you see? What, what the external reality, what it does is it arranges and rearranges itself in multiple ways. It arranges itself and rearranges it, rearranges it, rearranges itself at different times in different ways. So if all you think, if all you see, if all that govern your perception is this external reality, what do you do when it changes? What do you do when it doesn't line up with what you see or what you think or what you want? What do you do? It is your perception that adds beauty and creativity and bring innovation to your life. Stop being battered and bruised and, and pressed down by all this facade that we see. Oh, yes, they are good. They are great. But in the midst of that, what do you see? How do you see yourself? Not what people say about you. It is not what they say about you that matters. It is not what they think about you that matters. It is not their judgment of you or their qualification of you that will count at the end of the day. It is what you see of yourself. The perception that you have of yourself is what would determine where you end up in life. Because in life, perception is everything. Perception. It's everything. For instance, th 
think about your life at this very hour. Think about the story that you are, you are living right now. Think about the life that you are enjoying or experiencing at this hour. It's all like a storybook, like, like a, a screenplay. But the question you must ask yourself, the question I must ask, my, ask myself, who wrote this storyline? Story who is the writer of this story that I am living out? You know all these actors and actresses that we see on TV and in movies and all of that. They didn't just come up with all those ideas in their head. No, somebody sat somewhere and just put pen to paper and write what what John would say, how Rebecca will respond, how which uh, uh, weather will, will show. Somebody sat somewhere and did that. It's the same thing with your life. The question is, who wrote yours? Is it you? Or is it somebody else? Who wrote your story? Did you consciously, deliberately decide to create the reality you are living right now? Or was it mainly shaped by your parents, your teachers, your friends, your spouse, your school, your the media, the government, the society? And they just pull it all together in a bag and handed you over the bag and said, there you go, this is your life. Who wrote your story? Because unless you, you take that responsibility to write your own story, there's always somebody. There's always a ghost writer who is ready, who is willing, who is prepared, who is, who is just raring to go to write your story. So if you don't like the story you are living right now, you don't need to sack this story writer. You don't need to get rid of the people reading the story. No, you need to change your perception. You need to come to the point where you say, I hear you, but you're wrong. That's not me. You need to envision how you will write the next chapter, the next scene, the next episode of your own story and don't just think about it sit and start writing it well if I write it nobody will read it it wasn't meant for the world to read it is your own story the right people to read it to experience it to perceive it to, to taste and see how good it is they will come at their time all you have to do is to focus your perception on creating a new reality, the one that you are in charge of, the storyline. Take back the job of the screenwriter for your life and the director for your life and the producer for your life and the actor for your life. Be all in that by yourself for yourself. But it start be with your perception of who you are. Because once you understand how your perception grows, how it evolves, how it represents the real you, not the one that is supposed by somebody else, no, the one that you know that is you, that is created and written and produced and directed by you, life will begin to work for you. Life will begin to just open up for you because you are not wasting your time and your energy trying to meet a standard that, was, that is set by somebody else who doesn't know you. Who is not you? Who doesn't have the same meaning, the same interpretation, the same interaction, the same understanding of who you are?
because once you understand how the percep how your perception grows and 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 how it involves in you by you with you suddenly the path of life that you will start to walk in will change will be different and you will experience a new dimension of life that you've never seen before because nobody can understand you better than you nobody can feel you better than you can feel yourself and therefore you are the only person that is actually qualified equipped and knowledgeable enough to write your own story to shape your own reality to form your own image and become everything that you are destined to become every day every day before you start your day every day have a clear vision have a clear understanding have, have a clear perception of who you are of what your past was of what your present is and what your future is going to be have that clearly imprinted in your head in your mind in your soul in your heart in your spirit so that when the realities of life and the shenanigans of the society when they come trying to paint a different story a different picture about you or who you should be you have already established a, a baseline and once you compare it to that and it doesn't work you just kick it out and say i've, I've got the, my own blueprint here but if you don't have that if you let the world the society the people around you the the teacher the government the, the whoever if you let them write your story they don't have your best interest at heart they will write it in such a way that it will eventually be to their own benefit and not to yours life has a natural process life has a natural process your role and my role is not to do life your role and my role is to understand that process to follow that process and see life just open up in front of us your life my life our lives can only and will only happen within the context and the concept and the environment of what we know and how we perceive ourselves so it's not important how the world sees you it's not important how the world perceives you the question is how do you see yourself what is your perception of yourself what do you understand about your own perception of yourself because you cannot rise beyond the the reality of what you think and how you think of yourself i don't care they can put you in the palace and and decorate the whole place with gold and diamonds if all you see is that you are a proper just barely making life you will come up from that water bed and sleep on the bare ground because that's the perception that you have of yourself. But you see once you establish the, the the baseline of the right perception of yourself, now you can start to build on top of that. You can start to build on top of that. Now people may want to help you, but they they will help you by first of all looking at the pattern of what you are building. They will help you they will bring to you a, a, a anything and everything that is in line with what you are already building rather than for you to leave your life architectural design to somebody else when you have the right perception and you perceive rightly about yourself you can choose to detach yourself from anything that doesn't line up with your perception 
with your views, with your life, with your the plan that you have for yourself. And we, I, I'm not advocating that we should be rude and obnoxious. But you see, many of us, we spend our lives, most of our lives, trying to please other people to the detriment of ourselves. Yes, we've made everybody happy, but now you are, you're, you're not happy with yourself. Now you've pleased everybody, but you, have, you are displeased with yourself. No, it is because you don't have the right perception. You are not perceiving yourself rightly. You are not thinking about yourself rightly. You don't have a right, right thought and right understanding of yourself. Because if you do, oh yes, be nice to people, help people, reach out and support people. But ultimately, there comes a time in life when the best thing you can do is to be selfish. Is to be selfish. To think of yourself. You can only give of what you have. And if you don't have of yourself, what are you going to give to, to others? But when you begin to read your own perception, you begin to study it, you begin to analyze it and have a better understanding of it, you become more careful with everything that comes your way. You are more, more, you are choice deliberate. You choose deliberately whether this is part of you or not. And that doesn't make you mean and, and, and a bad person. No, it just makes you have a, 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 a standard, a baseline. And eventually, the people around you, they will see that, they will understand it, they will respect it, and they will work with you based on that perception of who you have, of, what, of yourself that you have. There's no wrong or right in life. Everything can serve the purpose in your life and everything carries its mess with it. The challenge is your state of mind and your perception of things, of yourself, of your environment, of your goal, of your purpose, of your vision, of your dream. So I'm asking again, how do you see yourself? What do you know about yourself? How do you study yourself? How do you explain yourself? Who are you? I'm not asking what people say that you are. I'm not interested in what they think about you. Thank God for their ability to think. But Tunde, who are you? James, who are you? Rita, who are you? Kunle, who are you? Shadrach, who are you? Who are you? Have you become what they say? Have you become who they say? Have you become what they think? Have you been boxed up in a in a in a in a hole in a in a solitary cell, locked and the key taken away, based on what other people think and say and and how they see you, or have you? broke down, you just kicked down the door to that cell and set yourself free because what they think and say about you doesn't represent who you are. As you grow in life, as you experience more in life, as you are exposed more to life, your perception will grow too. 
it will evolve too. It will change too. Which is another thing. Don't be locked down into what you think of yourself when you are in primary six and now you are 48. No, let your perception evolve with you. Let it grow with you. Let it develop with you. Let it increase in knowledge, in depth, in, 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 in scope with you as you grow. Because if you get yourself locked into what you think and how you see yourself when you were 16, even though now you are 44, guess what? The rest of the years between 16 and 44, you've just opened the, the storybook to somebody else to write, up, to, to write who you are and determine who you could be and where you could go and how you could do Context specific. Self perception, they vary depending on the person with whom you, again, that's another thing. You need to understand that the perception that you have of yourself will also be affected by the interactions that you have with other people. And if you don't have a good perception of yourself, if you don't have the right perception about yourself, when you meet people, when you interact with others, when you relate to other people, because they are bound to leave a, a, a mark on you or something on you, they could derail your perception if you don't have a baseline that is strong enough to, to withhold and withstand the barrage of, of, of interactions that you're going to be involved with, but that is still pliable enough to see the good in others and understand where other people are coming from. Oh, I'm trying to work through this in my head. I'm going to present. Self-perception, self-concept, self-esteem, they, 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 they move in a, in a, in different ways and different forms. That doesn't mean they're not rigid. It just means they accommodate different people, different situations, different uh, categories and different interactions and different relations but ultimately it is still the same perception of who you are of yourself that is moving and intertwining with all those 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 uh, issues and so from time to time you see your self perception changing or evolving you see your self-esteem changing or evolving. There's nothing wrong with any of that. It is part and parcel of what life brings. All you have to do is to ride the wave without losing the, the, the truth about yourself and who you are. When you change, or when, you, if, when your self-perception or self-concept or self-esteem, when they change and they evolve and they grow and expand, guess what? Your communication, your interaction, your dealings with other people will change as well. And when your dealings and communications and contracts, I mean, and, and interactions with other people, when they change, those people will also change so who the new you is? You want somebody to change in the way they treat you, in the way they relate to you, in the way they handle you, in the way they interact with you. Don't beat them over the head with a two by four, asking them to change. No, you change. Change yourself. 
evolve and grow and develop and 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 straighten yourself up they will be they, they, it is a natural projection progression rather for them to now see a different person and so they change the way they deal with you for instance say you have a friend very good friend of the opposite sex, but there's nothing unto us. We, you guys are just friends. And then one day, they're married. You're still friends, but immediately you adjust the way you relate to them. They don't need to tell you to say things have changed, you need to change. You just know within yourself that I can't just call him up at 3 a.m. and say, I need to talk to you. Now he's married. I he can't just I can't just call her up at two in the in the morning to say, "Do you ma fancy? Let's go for a walk." No, she's married now. That you don't need to go to any school to learn that. You just know because their person have evolved, has changed, and your the communication too has to change. Oh, man. You know, there are some common barriers that has been erected over the years in your life and in my life against accurately and positive, positively determining our self-perception and self-esteem and self-respect, not because the people or the, the barriers were, in some cases, they weren't deliberately set up to come against us. They're just part of life. They just grow as we grow, and gradually they become bigger and stronger and higher, that eventually you can't climb over them, and therefore you live on the other side of the fence with them. But how do you break some of those barriers? How do you overcome some of those challenges? How do you deal and handle and, 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 and break down those challenges and barriers in life? You don't need a big sledgehammer and, and, and shovel to break them. The first thing you need to do is just know yourself. Accurately know yourself. You see, if you don't know yourself, if you don't know who you are, if you don't know what you are, if you don't know how you are, where you are, when you are, you've just left it to others to make that decision, to form that opinion, to determine that outcome. But when you have a, a full understanding of yourself, Every distortion about you will just vaporize. Every contrary opinions and opinion uh, or views or, or, or beliefs about you will be null and void because they don't line up with who you know you are. But it starts with you knowing who are you. I asked just now, who are you? Not what people say about you. Not what you do for a living. Not where you're from. Not who you, what your name is. No, who in the core of your being. Who are you? If you cannot, if you don't have the right perception of yourself, if you cannot perceive yourself correctly, you end up perceiving others wrongly. Because your perception of yourself is a baseline. And the Bible says, if the foundation be faulty, what can the righteous build? If your baseline is faulty, if your, your ground zero 
is wonky, is lopsided. Everybody that you relate to, that you interact with, that you perceive, they're going to come down in that same lopsided shape. But if you know who you are, you accurately determine your person and you know your, your, your core being. Suddenly, everybody have a chance with you. You know, this issue of racial discrimination and racism and all of this, zim, zim, zim. The bottom line is the people that are perpetrating them, they don't know themselves. They don't know who they are. They are always wondering, am I? And most of this ignorance is covered up in matrixism. They are covered up in ego. They are covered up in turning a defense into an attack. Instead of working on identifying, establishing who they are in themselves, they put it on you to not discover who they are because they know that if you dig deeper, you'll find out they don't know who they are. Ask anybody who is, who is, who is, a, who is, who is a racist if they will tell you the truth. Ask them. Why do you discriminate against that person? What is the core? What's the bottom line? What's the real deal here? They don't know. Oh, he's black or he's white or he's this or that. But you see, all those are superficial. The main reason any human being would discriminate against another human being is because they don't know who they are originally. And so to pro protect their ignorance, they make other people feel less than them. But it doesn't work. You can see through that. But it starts with you knowing yourself. I remember there was a year when we when we were living in Hertfordshire and we moved into this neighborhood as a family we, we moved into a property in this neighborhood and to get to that property we have to you have to drive through a big golf course that is just posh i mean just looking at the 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 green you can know this is posh. and you so you drive through that golf course to get to the other side and then that's where this secluded neighborhood is and we didn't i it didn't even cross my mind we didn't think i didn't think about it when i went to view the property and say yeah we'll take it we'll, we moved in and then one day somebody said do you realize you're the only black family in this neighborhood i said really I didn't think about it because for me, I mean, I'm I am a human being. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm I'm, I'm black. I'm proud. Oh shoot, I'm a black man as black as they come, but I am so full of myself as a human being that the first thing that crosses my mind is not the fact that I'm a black man. The first thing that crosses my mind is the fact that I'm a man. Every other thing can join the queue. But do you know some people will not move into that such neighborhood because and so we moved into this neighborhood and at the initial stage, people around there didn't know how to handle us. And we just get on with our lives. And then one of our neighbors across the road started reaching out to us. We started talking and our children goes to their house, their children comes to our house and gradually the whole neighborhood opened up for us and to us and we but we were not there to prove a point we were there to to live 
We this is our house. This is where we live. But you see, it starts with you accurately knowing who you are. If you know who you are, nobody will be able to tell you otherwise. Even when they try, you can tell them, uh-uh, wrong answer. You got it wrong. So how do you break the barriers? Number one, know who you are accurately, perfectly. Number two, empathize with others. You see, empathy is your ability to understand and be sensitive to the feeling of others. We, we, at every point in your life and in my life, there will be some that are above you and some that are below you and some that are at par with you. That's life. But you see, again, if you don't know who you are, you will not be able to relate to others. You will not be able to reach out to others. You will not be able to empathize with others. You will not be able to feel what they are feeling. When you empathize with others, it's because you can perceive them not right, not wrong, but you can perceive them correctly. Because you have a good understanding of yourself. Number three, have a positive attitude to life. Have a positive attitude to life in general. And that includes to things, to people, to circumstances, to situations, to challenges, to blessings, to hardship. Have a positive attitude. If you hold a negative attitude towards someone or towards something, there is no magic in the world that can make you have a good perception of that person. It's not possible. It is not possible for you to to. To hate somebody and see them as a good person. It's not possible. It's not possible for you to, 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 to think of somebody as being not worthy of the air that you breathe and the ground that you walk on and still pray for them. It's not possible. But when you have good attitude, a positive attitude, an attitude that says, hallelujah, praise the Lord. When your attitude is a positive one, even when you see the bad in people, your positive attitude will override your perception of them. So, make it a point of duty. To cultivate, to maintain, to display, to carry positive attitude of yourself and of others. So that your personal biases will not crop in and hinder your perception of who they are. Number four. It is a natural tendency for human beings to form an impression about another person within the first six to seven seconds. That's just natural. But you see, all you've done is build a frame of that person. But over time, you can concretize that frame or allow that frame to evolve. So in order for you to break down barriers, why don't you allow that frame to evolve? Delay that natural tendency to form an opinion and a, a, a perception of somebody. Because naturally, once you form an opinion of something, of someone, even when they do something that is contrary to the opinion or the perception you have of them, and you know glaringly that this is not the way I thought it's going to work out. 
but the natural defense mechanism will make you now start to look for reasons to justify to help you solidify that your first opinion or impression of them even in the face of reality that it's not so but if you can develop the ability to hold back from forming that first impression give them the benefit of the doubt give them the time to establish for them to prove to you who they are and what they are now we're talking finally as we close you want to break down this barrier communicate openly have a policy of open communication you see most of the misconception wrong perception that we have of ourselves of others of things of events and circumstances are due to inadequate or incorrect or incomplete or one-way communication have you heard the word giving the other person the benefit of the doubt Give them the time, give them the opportunity, give them the avenue to give their version, to tell the way they see it, to explain their understanding, to, to justify the, the, or the, the rationale behind their action. If you can do that by, um, uh, by establishing and maintaining open communication with others your perception of them will change it will improve it will grow and you will be better for it both of you i'm going to stop here for tonight uh, because i realize i started late but I hope something that I've said tonight is going to be ringing in your ear, ears for the rest of this week and over the weekend. And I hope you're going to take on board some of the things we've talked about. Not just about your dealings with other people, but more importantly, your dealing with yourself. Your perception of yourself. How do you see yourself? What do you see? about yourself how do you talk about yourself how do you reason concerning yourself because ultimately that will determine who you become and generally we teach people how to treat us if you don't have a good and correct perception of yourself you are teaching the people around you to treat you badly and when they do you can't complain because you gave them the blueprint. Thank you so much for being part of tonight's program. Uh, I think we're going to try and complete this next week. And uh, hopefully between now and then, you and I will have the opportunity, the avenue to practice some of the things we've talked about tonight. To go back and re-examine and study and become a student of ourselves so that we can have the correct and the right perceptions about ourselves and about others. Thank you. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.